First off, when we see a TAF, we have a lot more information, obviously, than on a METAR. Remember, a TAF is a forecast. So because of that, we have some more times involved here. And this means we need to get stuff organized. <clears throat> the best way to start is organize the report. Figure out what is going on here. Okay, so the first thing is we've got, like on a METAR, we have a station that's making that forecast is made for. We have an issue time and we have that issue time here. We've got a valid time for the report. We've got a lot of information going on here. So I'm going to take a look and break this down. I'm going to look for the from times, maybe highlight them in some way. Here are my from times. And then I'm going to break it down and look even closer for any probs or any tempos. Okay, so I'm going to organize the report looking carefully for all these things because as you'll see, these things come into play with what the report is trying to tell you. First off, we're starting with our location and our valid times. Okay, station that it's for, okay, makes sense. Then we get to our issue time. It's a lot like what you see on a METAR. So we have the day day. So this is on the 9th of the month and it was issued at 1720 UTC. They put a Z to help remind you. So all the times in here are going to be in UTC. So that's important. That was when it was issued. The next step is to look at when it's actually valid. So our valid time group is right here. It is valid on the 9th from 18Z to 18Z on the 10th. And there are a few different ways I've seen these written, but just realize that sometimes it might actually say 10th at uh, 18, so you can actually see that. Sometimes it's, it's this way. So just be aware it's good for that valid time period. So the first line of our TAF is an unwritten from period. Okay, so they always start with what's called a from period. And we're gonna talk in a moment here about what from is. But first, just realize that first line of the TAF, it doesn't say from, but this is where it would be if it did say from. So it doesn't say from, but it is. From, so what does from indicate for us? From tells us that they're expecting, we've got four of them here, plus the one here that's written from, so we really have five from periods here. That is where we expect the prevailing conditions to change rapidly in a period of less than one hour. So we have a significant change that is going to change rapidly in a period of less than one hour. We also have a time given and a date. So here we are expecting the change to start um, or I shouldn't say start because basically since it's an hour, it's plus or minus an hour. So our change uh, on the 9th could start happening as early as somewhere in the 1900 hour, but it could go as long as 21, but they're expecting that to happen in less than an hour. They're just not, they're not saying it has to happen at 2000. It's going to happen right at 2001. I'm expecting that. No, we actually do have um, plus or minus an hour on either side. So it's not forecast to start right at 20 Zulu in this first from line here in, in this specific from line. Uh, this is only on National Weather Service TAFs. What a PROB 30 is used by the National Weather Service to do is forecast a low probability, hence the number 30, so a 30% probability of specifically precipitation or thunderstorm and associated weather or obscuration type of elements. So something's gonna happen precipitation or thunderstorm wise and it's kind of a low probability. They're not sure about it. They don't use it in the first nine hours of the TAF either. And they have another restriction that they're only going to use one of these things. Now, I'm not really concerned that you know that it's not in the first nine hours or only that they're only gonna use it one time, but just be aware, this is looking at a low probability of something happening. So here we have an example. We've got a prob 30. This tells me on the 9th, again, we can divide up our times. So on the 9th 
from 20 Zulu to the 9th at 22 Zulu, then this is when we are expecting this to possibly happen. Again, they're saying it's only in the um, first, this is, this is a 30% chance of something happening. So on the 9th from 20 Zulu to the 9th at 22 Zulu, they are saying a 30% chance of half a mile visibility with thunderstorms and rain and overcast clouds at 800 feet. And these clouds are supposed to be cumulonimbus clouds. Well, that makes sense because we have thunderstorms. Notice all that coding came over from METAR information. So same kind of coding conventions. So we have that PROV 30. It's a 30% chance of half a mile visibility in thunderstorms and rain and overcast cumulonimbus clouds at 800 feet. And we wanna note that this is again in heights AGL, so heights above the ground level.